and uh, all my patients are referred to the id and uh, chest specialists uh, so that's a disclaimer chiefly because it's very difficult to deal with so much of knowledge for starters and the other thing is uh, complications and side effects and changes in dose and all so it's it's much easier at my level of <coughs> practice to <coughs> refer and we still have questions anyway so i'm going to try and get through this only for spine so there's this 22 year old female who had pain constitutional symptoms some weakness in the legs not too much difficulty in walking need support and this is her mri and for those who are not used to seeing mris very much there's vertebral destruction pre vertebral abscess intraspinal abscesses and cord compression now this is something which uh, one would immediately start planning uh, you know which theater what time who's the anesthetist and which implant to call and uh, but what was eventually done for this was akt so of course biopsy yes without biopsy never so biopsy akt and you can see in 3 months uh, you can see the difference in the uh, mri and by 9 months it was completely healed and therefore the message i want to give to you and it's not with this case but this message the, the, there are only 3 slides of mine which are important and this is the slide that spinal tb today is essentially a medical disease it is to be treated medically and surgery is only reserved for its complications and sequelae so we have loads and loads of tb spine even today but the amount of surgery has gone down to i don't know maybe less than one a month whereas uh, i remember in the km days we were just flooded with tb spines who we used to operate so let's see what is the role of surgery let's try to put this in perspective because the truth is not that no patient needs surgery and definitely the truth is not that all patients need surgery and my dear friend uh, gautam who's going to like probably punch me in the break but he said that stability is required for akt to act and i'm sorry no I, all i can say is no okay anyway so uh, so medical management alone is hi is highly effective uh, in treating spinal tb irrespective of what the mri looks like so that's also very important uh clinical grounds are different but if you only look at the mri uh because i have seen uh, you know I, in the earlier days when i started conserving all of these and i had other patient people especially neurosurgeons they would say oh lot of destruction lot of abscess lot of but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what the mri shows surgery is the exception rather than the rule and whether you have something like this where you can see abscess you can see cord compression but clinically so i'm saying if this same patient has grade 1 or 2 power we need not like i am not going to say we are going to conserve this patient but if this patient is walking normally and just has a little back pain there is no need to operate him only based on the mri and we used to do follow up mris for these patients and we can see complete healing in these patients even something like this with a very large abscess stiffness dysphagia and like i said start planning the theater you know c4 to c7 corpectomy plate anterior posterior all of that if you look at this mri scary massive abscesses even the abscess was not drained just akt in 4 months this is what the mri looks like so the point is that akt is highly effective irrespective of what the mri looks like your decision is based on clinical grounds and what we tend to follow of course is what is called as a mid path regimen which is medications rest maybe bracing most important thing is review and monitoring the patient and then surgery for the specific indications so yes surgery is necessary i i mean we wouldn't be here if that wasn't so because if akt is so effective then why operate at all i did say we do once once a month so surgery is not for the disease it is for the effects of the disease it is what the disease causes and the effect of the disease may be on neurology which to us as spine surgeons is the single most important thing but also on the structure of the spine which in the short term may be pain and instability and in the long term would be deformity so honestly this is all that uh, we are looking at so what are the indications for intervention and this actually is way back in the 50s by sedden and uh, by sedden and butler and there would be these four indications for surgery neurology the disease the disease deformity and debilitation so these are the four indications in slightly larger detail 
if there is a dense deficit like i said if the patient has come with grade 1 or 2 power not able to walk we are not really we can still conserve there are people who would even do that but not me i think in the modern era we would operate these patients if the patient gets worse on treatment again the, you know you would review the whole case but likely to go in for surgery deficits not responding disease i'm going to come to this in detail as to when there is no response or continued pain what is to be done but diagnosis and doubt sometimes i mean of course yes biopsy but sometimes need surgery deformity yes childhood tb there are specific indications i'm not going to cover them here you need to read raj shekhar's paper but prevention of deformity in children very important if there is really extensive many segmental circumferential destruction or a progressive deformity we as surgeons are able to uh, treat that debilitation is another thing which we do sometimes if a patient is really bedridden an elderly patient is bedridden and he's just going to be in pain then we can do some kind of minimally invasive stabilization and mobilize this patient it doesn't like i said it's not to cure him from the tb but it is just to mobilize the patient so let's look at why neurology becomes an indication so the causes of neurological deficit is important it either may be compressive or non compressive but in the large majority of our cases it's compressive the non compressive can be vascular which is a little questionable or a meningeal or a meningitis compression i have uh, like sort of i think of it as soft compression which may be an abscess under pressure inflammatory exudates and granulation tissue so these are the soft compressions and then there is also hard compression so there are sequestrae of disc and bone there is an internal gibbous if there is a deformity and there is an actual translation which is a hard compression so you need to be able to differentiate these two for the simple reason that they behave differently to therapy so abscesses uh, such as this which are under pressure this is like a carpet of granulation tissue and if you operate a tb spine you would have seen all of these or sequestrae and in fact when i used to uh, we used to operate many more we find that those with severe neurological deficit are those who have these sequestrae of bone and disc compressing the cord this is an actual internal gibbous uh which is causing the cord compression or an actual translation which is causing the neurological deficit so now if you have abscess or granulation tissue this is amenable to medical treatment and therefore you can give a conservative trial but if you have sequestrae and actual gibbous or a translation it would be too much to expect that akt is going to get this better so i'm just trying to give you the mid path like when i say don't operate doesn't mean don't operate everybody if somebody has got a deficit who's got a bony compression then you do need to operate and these patients you can't do a conservative trial you need to operate so therefore if a patient comes with neurological deficit which is dense and he cannot stand it is much better to go in for surgery because you give him the benefit of early neurological recovery yes it can be argued you put him in bed and give him akt and he may get better eventually but i think the quality of recovery and the guarantee of recovery is better if a well executed surgery is done for such a patient patients with milder deficits you can treat conservatively and if they don't recover again you can go there's no rush uh, like to go in for surgery you can start them or if they have worsening then they need to go for surgery what about the second indication which is disease so that is a little modified in the older one patients whose disease was not recovering went for surgery but that is not necessarily so today so if the clinical response is poor there is continued pain the mri is not improving which i'm going to have a slide about that later as well and the markers are not getting better like weight gain esr etc you can say that this is poor response and this can be for a variety of reasons one of them can be resistant disease and when i say resistant i've put into inverted commas because that would have a whole bunch of other things it is not just that the disease is resistant but it also could be that the patient is immune compromised or as we pointed out uh, you know as as was pointed in the previous thing the drug dosing is not proper absorption is not proper spurious drugs so there can be a whole bunch of stuff under the thing of what i mean to say the the drugs are not working on the disease when i say resistant disease there can be mechanical factors which are into including the pain which is instability or in fact there can be a mistaken diagnosis that you are treating this with uh, akt but it is something else and therefore the algorithm today would be if there's a poor response the most important thing is to sit down and review the case right from the beginning don't just keep on going from opd to opd saying known case of tb spine and then just go on treating it just go back like have you done everything for the diagnosis have you done a biopsy what was the actual result or did you just pick one thing on that and treat it did you just look at the histopath where it said granuloma and then start akt or was some 
something else positive as well and discuss with your uh, you know colleagues in uh, microbiology as well as in id and also then study the structural aspects of the spine see so what we do we do a dynamic x-ray we'll do one lying down one sitting up if there's collapse if there's district that could be the cause of pain and if it's instability you treat it on merit and when i say treat it on merit i am again not saying you have to operate all of them one word about instability in tb spine there is a difference there are different types of instability in the spine there are those which are temporary instabilities so if you have an instability in tb spine on day one but you give akt it's going to heal up and it's not going to be permanently unstable so it's even instability is not a hard indication for doing surgery all the time but if you're giving akt patient is not getting better and the spine is unstable then yes you you need to do surgery and the other factors if they late responder resistant etc then you need to have a look you may need to do a repeat biopsy you need to again involve your colleagues in to see whether blood levels are proper absorption is he actually taking the drugs properly is he taking some other drug which is causing the so all of that we cannot do so let the uh, medical experts handle that and after that then do they need debridement or not is a little tricky question uh you know if you find a surgeon friendly id guy they may say please do a debridement and then you happily go ahead and do it but it you know it just uh, tweaking of the drugs may just solve the problem one slide about the mri so an mri i think the most important thing to know about an mri is that for tb it takes 3 to 4 months minimum for the mri to look better if you do the mri at one month it will almost surely look worse and Uh, you know the, you unnecessarily patients land up with either panic or surgery so if you do an mri at one month it will almost surely look worse at two months also it may look worse i think four months dr bhavin you are nodding your head so four months is the safest even six so even four months is not that good and therefore early scans may show worsening and don't do early mris because it will just create a panic for everybody you can wait yes so i am also not saying don't do mris at all so if if i two months patients is getting worse neurology worse pain etc then do an mri and if that is showing serious worse thing you uh, do have a problem but if the patient is getting better and you're doing an mri at two months which is looking worse don't say that i need to operate this patient what about surgery basically we do debridement we do decompression and reconstruction and the uh, decompression and reconstruction goes hand in hand just a few uh, things for the surgeons you know surgery uh, tb has got a little zone concept where the anterior zone is the zone of disease and we need to decompress debride and reconstruct that and the posterior zone um, is usually intact usually not always and this we use for your instrumentation etc so we need to approach it adequately do an effective decompression and reconstruct the defect so reconstructing the defect is also very very important and therefore we need to attack the anterior column where we do all of so i i think i don't want to go uh, in great detail at this point but the point is we do an anterior based decompression and reconstruction for them which in the past we used to do in the thoracic spine anteriorly and we then added in so i'm going historically we first we used to only debride which failed which was the ald they used to get worse deformities then we started bone grafting which got slightly better but then there were problems because of graft slippage etc so then we added instrumentation because we realized that there is no problem in instrumenting tb and that increased the safety of the surgery it you got early mobilization and you could also correct deformities so you know something like this which would debride stabilize and bone graft heals up to do better something like this with akt uh, not working well for whatever reason worse deformity cord compression etc you debride and you treat it and this patient then gets better so we don't have to do anterior approach for everybody anymore because we have this transpedicular approach now where the principle of the surgery is the same we just do a posterior incision and then go in from the side but you have to fix these patients you can't not fix them because you are going through healthy elements you are removing facets and pedicles which are otherwise healthy and can support the spine to do your debridement and therefore you need to fix and if if this was the anterior approach then this is the transpedicular approach where you remove this area this area and then you are able to look to the front of the spine and so it's technically challenging but now everybody is doing it and you can get these same sort of x-rays without opening the chest of course in the cervical spine you do it bang anteriorly and there are some cases like this which have only a posterior epidural abscess 
the so called spinal tumor syndrome where you have to anyway not go transpedicular but do midline bhavin only one question you can't biopsy this right no this is inside the canal okay maybe not this patient but if you have only an epidural abscess can you biopsy it okay so he's a guy who never says no but i think most people will say that epidural abscesses they can't biopsy uh, we also do minimally invasive surgery now we can do all of these fancy things put in screws through small incisions do debridements and uh, reconstructions through smaller incisions and smaller scars but this is just fancy stuff to impress all of you all uh, most spine surgeons are able to do this and sometimes we need to do surgery for residual abscesses so something like this with a lot of akt still has residual abscesses which are causing mass effect and again we can drain them in various ways but we can even drain them by a laparoscopy or retroperitoneoscopy uh, with very very small scars and these patients really go home the very next day deformity is another indication if there is progressive deformity dorsal lumbar junction deformity in young uh, children uh, and young patients or circumferential destruction or multiple like 3 4 vertebrae gone then it may require a stabilization as well childhood tb is an entire different chapter which you please read on your own and uh, these patients uh, require stabilization as well so uh, you know you do the standard fixation correction of deformity i mean i don't want to add the technical thing here the the main thing is the principle is that you do a posterior correction and an anterior reconstruction and uh, this is like deformity and instrumentation is absolutely mandatory for these patients and fusion is the aim so in short now to just come towards the end one must understand what aspects of spinal function are affected by the disease so tb spines are different all are not the same and we must know that some of these are temporary so for instance instability can be temporary because when the akt acts and the bone fuses it becomes stable deformity cannot be temporary if somebody is going to a progressive deformity the best that can happen is he stays at that deformity but it's not going to improve neurology can still be temporary if you got a partial deficit when the abscess dries up that can recover so you need to know which is temporary and treatable by medical treatment and which requires actual physical treatment which is a surgery and you need to know which can be given conservative care now conservative care may be efficacious but the speed may be slow that's what i'm saying when a patient has great 2 3 power we are not saying that akt will not dry up the abscess but it's going to take longer that patient should be given the benefit of surgery and surgery is needed to take care of that which akt cannot achieve within time one second i think my last slide is coming up final words yes so medical therapy is the still the mainstay of managing tb spine you need to know the indications uh, to intervene and decision making is based more on clinical grounds than the mri so don't only depend on the mri for your treatment once you decide to operate then of course you need to do the best best of decompression and best of reconstruction to uh, get your neurological recovery and in the long run also you need a stable spine for you to be uh to get a good function because i think patients want that they don't really want to be left with a sort of deficit thank you